Listen, I have a million questions for you. Um, let's start with the most important thing. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Absolutely, it's a Christmas movie. Christmas movie. It, okay. it, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, is what's so funny is, uh, you know, 30 years ago or 25 years ago, it might have been not a Christian movie, but it, I mean, Christmas movie. But but if you keep switching your story around, people will continue the debate and they'll keep, you know, watching it at Christmas time. So. Right. Uh, at what point did you realize it, it is crazy that your first credited screenplay was Die Hard? Because truthfully, it's it's one of the best villains in Hollywood history. It doesn't. It's so such a phenomenal movie. Um, at what point did you realize this was like an incredibly special movie? Uh, that that's that's a good good question. I it was it was. I, you know, the first time I saw it, the first time I saw dailies, uh, you know, the first time, you know, everybody needed to make that movie. I mean, the, the, the whole Die Hard thing is a whole nother conversation. I would, would love to talk to you about the details about that, but I'm. Oh, sir, I, I believe me when I say at another point, I would love to have a, a more in-depth conversation also about The Fugitive and a whole bunch of other movies. Anytime. Um, so uh, I've seen the first five episodes of Vikings Valhalla. I want to give you a congratulations. I watched all of the original Vikings. I'm a fan of the show. And I thought these episodes were really so well done. Um, and I'm curious, how did you actually get involved? Was it Netflix coming to you? Did you go to Netflix? How did this thing germinate? Um, uh, <clears throat> that's a really good question. First of all, I, I was a fan also. It means a lot as a fan of the Vikings to hear you say that you know you found Valhalla, uh, 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 you know the transition between these two because they're two different animals. You know it's it, it totally. But I, uh, Morgan O'Sullivan, who was an executive producer on Vikings, and he'd worked with Michael Hurst, um, sort of brought me in and called me up. I knew Michael. We developed a show together, um, but Michael didn't 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 wasn't really part of that at the time. Morgan just said, "Look, we're thinking about continuing the story." We don't have anything, you know. We don't really know what we want to do, um, you know. And I said, I don't want to. I, I don't want to write season seven of Michael's show. It, you know that he it's it's run its course as far as that's concerned. Fabulous show, iconic, great characters. You know, the action's terrific. Um, so let me let me sort of putter around in history for a little bit and see if there's a place to come in. And I did that and did a lot of research. I kind of got my Viking, you know, history you know, up to the point where I could, I could be, you know, stupid. And, uh, and, and then I, I found the St. Bryce's Day massacre, which, you know, is not a, is, you know, it's not a bank holiday in England, you know, you don't really celebrate those <laughs> genocides. But, um, but I thought, wow, you know, for me, that had some sort of, you know, cultural resonance, you know, and relevance for me that I felt like you could start a story because we had pagan Vikings at this time and Christian Vikings. And just like in our culture, you know, you got the, you know, Republicans and Democrats, but when you go to war, when there's a 9-11, suddenly you forget your ideology and you become American and you go out and you, you know, you, you're one people. And inadvertently King Athelred gave King Canute and we gave the Vikings a reason to stop killing each other over, you know, religious differences and become Viking again. And I thought that's a very cool place to start a new series. And then by bringing in Freitas and Leif from Greenland, I you know, had characters that I could bring in and suddenly bring an audience up to speed 150 years later. Okay, what's it like? How, you know, bringing two people in who are outside of that Viking culture from, you know, from their great, great, great grandparents day. So that was exciting for me. And that when I got excited, then, then it there was, you know, let me go, good place to go, go hunting. I uh, got a, some specifics about the stuff. When you went into Netflix and you get the things going, did they say to you, hey, what's your idea for three seasons? What's your idea for five seasons? Because obviously they are not looking at this as a one and done kind of a thing. Vikings is incredibly popular around the world. Yeah, well, I, I, I wasn't... Um... Uh, I wasn't going to give them a chance to say, what's your idea? I told them what the idea was, okay? So, because I, you know, figured out if I'm going to tell this story, it's got to have, we got to get to the new world and we've yeah. got, you know, because we know that. And, and there's some certain things and Harold Sigerson has an incredible journey of his own, 
we know that. Uh, we know a lot about, you know, you know, how the Viking Age sort of moved through the 11th century and sort of goes to the Battle of uh, Hastings in, you know, 1066 and William the Conqueror and, and all of those type of things, which has incredible Viking roots. You know, William the Conqueror is the great, great, great grandson of Rollo. So it's, you know, there's all of this has this nice, wonderful symmetry to it if you know, if you can start to bring it together. So to your point, I said, here's what the first season is. Here's what I'd love for season two. Here's where we would take the story in success into a future area. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, people like Valhalla because I love this journey and I'd sure love to have an opportunity to, to, to complete it. Trust me when I say, man, I, as I said, I've watched all of Vikings. There is no way fans of that show are not going to respond to this one. Zero percent. Um, how many episodes is actually season one? I know that it's eight episodes. Do you consider eight those eight season one and then the next eight season two? Like, how does this work? Yeah, yeah, that's what it'll be. It'll be it'll be that classic Netflix eight, eight, you know, type of type of thing. At least it is with my show. And sure. so, um, uh, and, and season two will have a different vibe to it. You know, the, the same characters moving through the story progresses linearly on that path, but they're, you know, the characters will move and, and change and things like that. But um, uh, it, it's, you know, I see it as a continuing story, uh, but at the same time, each season has its own identity to it. Uh, and, you, you know, when we get to season two, you'll, yeah, hopefully we'll talk again and you'll say, oh, I see exactly what you mean. Um, where are you in the, sh like, have you shot, pardon me for not knowing, but Netflix has been a little bit mysterious. Have you shot all, uh, have you wrapped on season two? Like, where are you in the production? Yes, we've wrapped season two. I'm in editorial on season two. And that's, that's what I wanted to know. So, um, so the plan is for eight episode seasons. Uh, like that, that's what the number is. How did you guys decide because some shows are six, some shows are 13 and 10. How did you guys decide on the eight episodes per season? Um, I can't answer that question. I think that that may, that, that may have come down from high, you know, yeah. and, and then landed on me. Eight is a really good, you know, um, uh, it, 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 it doesn't sound like a lot, but it really has, uh, what I can accomplish in eight episodes is going to feel very weighty. I know you've seen the first five, you know, but the last three have it have their own character as well. So I think that, um, um, you know, it's, yeah, could you could do it with two, 10? Yeah, could you do it with 27? No, you know, it yeah. has a nice feel to it in terms of the weight. Well, one of the things about the eight, the five episodes that I saw is it is incredibly fast moving. Yeah. And I feel like the, the show has, it's bigger and has more action than the previous Vikings. And I'm curious, was, did Netflix say to you, um, you know, when, when you're writing, we really want this to be action packed. We really want, like, did they give you some sort of, you know, guidelines or mandates of what they were looking for with this Viking show? You know, Steve, when, when we went around and pitched it, um, you know, I, 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 I made that distinction at the beginning and, 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 and Michael Hurst was in the room at that time too. And, and, and Michael writes, great action, but we, we write totally differently. I mean, it's, you, you, as you said, the pacing is different on Valhalla than it is from, from Vikings. Uh, I, I made that a part of the pitch. I just said, you know, look, I, I, I can't write like this guy. I come from a feature action world where I really love the pace. And I think the audience that, that is in the action world love smart shows that just move characters in and you're having to think you know you're not three steps ahead of the audience but you're not letting the audience say oh man i got this i know exactly what's going to happen here um I, I i hate those type of shows i don't have patience for those type of shows and um and i that's my goal every time is to is to come away saying wow what happens next you know as opposed to you know i'm i'm ahead of this show i don't want that i you know that's a hard place to get, but I, 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 um, uh, I'm glad you picked up on the pacing because that's one of the big differences between the two, the, you know, Vikings and Valhalla. What did the producers say when you said to them, so listen, we're going to have a long bridge that's going to go into <laughs> London and it's going to have a crap ton of action on it. And we are going to 
beat the crap. Like what, what are the producers saying, you know, the money people, when you're telling them what you're looking at doing in season one? Uh, they, they, they went crazy. Um, yeah, it's, you can, you, you know, you're, you're asking all the right questions. It's in, and I, unfortunately, I can't share any of those comments with you because they're insane. <laughs> But, the, you know, the fact is, it's the, the great thing about my Irish crew, Steve, is that they they can do anything. They can do anything. They're, they're, the the headspace is there they, that you challenge them with this, you know, with the ideas like the London Bridge. And, and they're like, how do we solve that? So what we solved is we built four bridges, you know, and and we we think ahead. The one thing, you know, from my background is, you know, because I've come in and done lots of production rewrite work on big features and the money's spent, you know, and when you come in and rewrite something where the money's already spent, you got to be smart about how you do it and time really helps. So if you, if you give craftspeople, the, you know, time, really talented people, they can do anything and they can do it for the budgets that you're talking about, but you got to not say it's impossible. You got to say, how do we do this? And, and, and how do we do it for the budget? How do we make it look 10 times bigger than our budget? Great thing about you know, Ireland and that the Irish crew was they had already been doing that. They had been delivering feature style you know, shows on, on you know, I Love Lucy buzzers. You know, it's just, it's, 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 it's incredible what they had been able to do. And if, if you know, you're a connoisseur of this, this area. So when you look at something, you can sort of say, I know how, what the VFX is and what the actual is and what the practical is. You need somehow to be able to orchestrate all that so that you can do it and, and, you, and you stay focused on the characters. So it's, I mean, cause we're not in the Marvel universe. We're not gonna, you know, blow up this planet. We have to make it very real. Uh, I'm already out of time, but I got to ask you one other question. Um, I am so curious about Assassin's Creed, just because it, I, I have to ask because it's it's for me. I don't think the movies were the way to go with that property. I think it's a series, and there's so much mythology and depth to that world. There's so much you can do. Um, can you tease people like how it's coming along and what you're looking to do with it? I can't tease you at all, but I can have another conversation another time. Okay, if that is, um, is that is that a tease enough? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, it, it, but I, I, I let me just put it this way: I totally agree with everything you said. Everything yeah, I mean, you said. So yeah, we'll have we'll have a follow up conversation on AC at some point.